Our third presenter will be Kevin Irving, who previously was a national marketing specialist for AZZ Metal Codings and is now a consultant for the International Zinc Association. Kevin is also a certified NACE coding inspector. Kevin is a longtime active member supporter of the four regional various preservation partnerships. He will describe, describe the materials and processes involved as well as the cost advantages in using metallizing as a protection system for steel bridges. My name is Kevin. Irving, I'm with the International Zinc Association, and the Zinc Association actually uh, goes around the country and talks about how sustainable zinc is and how it's um, used and in, in, in how it helps in third world countries. Do you know that in third world countries, over 800,000 people a year die from lack of zinc? So it's something that's a, it's a needed mineral. And I'm going to be talking about metallic coatings on my presentation today for corrosion protection. So one of the questions I have is, you got we have a corrosion problem. Do you know that 25 to 30 percent of the corrosion could be eliminated if the right corrosion protection system was installed right from the get-go? Uh, why is it that federal highway, state, local, county, and highways use hot dip galvanizing guide rail for their for the rail? Back when this was specified uh, 40 some years ago, the galvanizing was actually more expensive than the than the paint. But now uh, hot dip galvanizing is on par, a little less than uh, paint. A colleague of mine. Uh, show me this bridge because a county engineer brought him out to this bridge and the county engineer wanted to know why after 12 and a half years, the three part paint system was failing. And off in the side on the left there, you see the hot dip galvanizing post that was there from the time this uh, bridge was installed was still fine and pristine shape. So the corrosion process, the law of entropy, when steel gets exposed, it goes to, it goes down to this mat, more natural state ore. And the definition of corrosion, it's either a chemical or electrical chemical reaction. In the basic corrosion cell, you have to have an anode, a cathode, some type of ocular solution, an electrical current. For corrosion to take place, all of these have to be present. If you take any one away, corrosion will not happen. And this is the galvanics uh, series of metal chart. And you can see you've got zinc and you've got steel. And zinc is more noble, so zinc is going to sacrifice itself to protect the steel. Another interesting thing about zinc is zinc corrodes 1 30th of what steel corrodes at. That's why galvanizing, metallizing zinc coatings give a very long uh, lasting uh, protection against with the steel. Another interesting attribute is it has cathodic protection. So if it gets scratched, that bare area that was scratched, the zinc surrounding it will actually protect that bare area. Another uh, thing is the UV resistance. I mean, we know UV is a, is a big thing. Metallic coatings has UV resistance. It's also sustainable. A lot of us are looking for, you know, our generation, the next generation. What about the third and fourth generation? Galvanizing and steel is infinitely recyclable. And that's another excellent characteristic of uh, zinc. We're not saying that uh, metallic coatings are perfect because if you have a pH of you know, five and a half to 12 and a half, you know, that's actually, that, that's actually up right in the window where, where metallic coatings are going to perform very well. If you get outside those windows, that's when you, we, we recommend a duplex where you're going to paint over that. You protect the steel with the metallic coating and then you paint over it to protect it. Metallic coatings is something that you actually top coat either on the zinc or the metallizing. You can use a, a regular paint, powder coating, a sealer, or a multi-part, that's considered a, a duplex coating. The duplex coating, when you paint over the galvanizer, you get the synergistic effect, which is actually 1.5 to 2.5 uh, more life than, than both coatings. What happens is that that zinc coating will get, is gonna start oxidizing and start sacrificing itself. When you paint over that, that zinc is actually stays is pristine when it started. And if you maintain that paint, that paint that's on top of that, metallic coating, you have a, a bridge or a, a, a structure that's going to have to, uh, that's going to last a very long time. Another interesting is uh, that we don't have uh, rust creeping. If, if you have a painted piece and it's got uh, a metallic coating underneath it, yeah, you might have a little bit of, of rust in that area, but you're not going to have to worry about undercutting because what happens is when rust starts, it starts permeating through the piece. And before you know it, we start having the, the paint pop. Well, if you duplex over the metallic coating, you don't, you, you eliminate that. Time to first maintenance. This is an interesting chart because this chart has got five different environment classification that shows how long are these metallic coatings going to last in different environment. And this is the specifier guide from uh, ISO. 
and in a dry atmosphere, the time to first maintenance, and we say first maintenance, 5% of rust, we're talking 200 years, and time to first uh, maintenance, if it's duplexed, is also 200 years. If you're in a rural inland area, you got about 170 years before you get have to do any maintenance. When we say we have to do maintenance, all you have to do is power wash. If you're in a salted environment, power wash, and you're power washing, you remediate the salts, and then you give it a, 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 a coating of paint. If it's duplex, you, you're also saying that we're saying another 200 years for that before you need maintenance. In high humidity and some air pollution, urban or mid-coastal, we're talking 42 to 170 years before you have to do any maintenance on your on the zinc coating. And if it's duplex, we're looking at 200 years. Swimming pool, chemical plants, industrial inland or coastals, we're looking at 21 to 42 years before you have to do any maintenance on the metallic coating. And for the duplex, we're looking at 42 to 84 years. Now, if you're in a really industrial, high humidity, high salty coastal environment, we're looking at 10 to 21 years, which is the metallic coating, where if it's duplex, we're looking 18 to 37 years. One of the things that's uh, uh, nice about having the metallic coating, once the paint starts giving up its life, all you have to do is come in and, and power wash it. Like I said earlier, remediate the salts and give it a coat of paint. Uh, if you go to Norway, if anybody wants a Norway study, my information is going to be at the end. But the, uh, the country of Norway, all their bridges are metalized and painted. They have not had to go in and sandblast any of those structures because what they're doing is they're maintaining the paint on the outside and it's lasting a very, very long time. And that's bridge preservation at its finest. Here's one of the things, size does matter. You know, the Industries had a really good go with, with hot tip galvanizing bridges. Michael talked about the Stearns Bayou that's um, over 50 years old and is still in fine and pristine shape. One of the things that for the galvanizing industry, they, they can only galvanize smaller pieces. They can't, there isn't a galvanizer in the world can galvanize anything like that. But what we're finding is we have people in DOTs that are actually, they're galvanizing the small little pieces. They're looking at the local area and see what it will fit in the small localized galvanizing plant. And then there's metalizing these pieces. And the bridge fabricators are getting smart because what they're doing is they're actually starting to metalize in house. So this way you don't have transportation costs and things like that. And as more metalizing bridge come on, which you're going to see a little later, the, the cost of metalizing will keep um, going down because people are getting more efficient from within. So what is thermal spray? What's the process? You get flame, flame, flame spray, arc spray. One of the things that's uh, really important with thermal spray is a surface preparation. With surface pressure preparation, we say you need to have a minimum of three and a half mil angular profile. You know, some people get a three and a half mil profile, but it's not angular. We need an angular profile so that NMI zinc will actually adhere to that substrate. And I'll go into that a little later. So basically you have your feedstock, which is usually 100% zinc or 85-15, which is 85% zinc, 15% uh, aluminum. You have your heat source. And then what happens is the, uh, you have these atomized droplets of zinc and it shoots it onto the substrate. This is not a new process. This process has been around for over 100 years. And this is just shows you how, what a setup of a, a flame spray looks like. You've got your oxygen and your acetylene, and you've got your wire going through there, and then you have your air. Some people are using clean air. Some people are using hydrogen to take the atomized zinc and put it onto the, the substrate. Here's just a picture of what the flame spray looks like. And this is the arc spray, where basically arc spray, you have a, you have the spools on top of this machine, but if you're doing big, big bridge work, they usually buy it in barrels. And you have your wire uh, positive and negative as it comes through the gun, it arcs at the center. Once, once it arcs, you atomize that zinc, and then the atomized zinc goes onto the substrate. This is the uh, basically a, a blow up of that, so you can actually see the, the workings of this. And this is just shows you a, a picture of the gun where you've got the two wires coming out. When these are energized, that's where the atomized zinc takes place. And then those brass pieces are actually the air that, that actually throws the uh, atomized zinc onto the substrate. And there's a picture of the inside of the gun. You can see where the wire's coming out. And then those brass pieces with the holes, holes is where the, the clean air comes out. So you have these droplets of, of zinc that's actually uh, hitting the, the substrate and they're forming in, in little blotches and they're cooling and solidifying. And what ends up happening is sometimes you have some void, sometimes you have some unmelted particles. That's why we say with metalizing, after you're done metalizing, you should, you should seal it or do something 
because some of these voids you want you want to seal in these voids to get a longer life out of the the metalized coating the coating characteristic it gives you barrier protection it gives you uh, cathodic protection it's abrasion resist resistance and you also uh, have sustainability which is con continuing going to be something that's going to be coming up their standard specification from NACE and American Welding Society and SSPC which is listed here but also another thing a lot of you that are on the this webinar today were involved in this paper with uh, NSBA where they actually the DOTs all the a lot of the DOTs had different specifications for metallizing so we came together and said hey let's at least come together and get one good guide to give the DOTs that they have for a metallizing specification this I, I think needs to be updated a little bit uh, this was done in 2017 but it's still a very good guide if anybody um, has uh, idea you're thinking of metallizing this this is a good starting the application it can be done in the shop it can be done in the field a lot of uh, people are actually starting to metallize bridges in the field there also is a lot of metallizing of, of concrete they're actually metallizing the concrete to protect the rebar on the inside and they're using cp protection by putting a charge into the power into the uh, rebar to uh, keep that rebar from from oxidizing and this way you're, they're, uh, you're not getting the uh, spalling and then there's some some automated processes too and applications for metallizing. So these are just some of the bridges that uh, have been metallized in the last few years. You've got the Champagne Bridge, bridge from uh, New York and Vermont, where they used 8515, uh, and then they used a, a sealer. So this this was actually a, and the thing that's nice. If anybody this was completed in 2011, if anybody wants to see how the metallizing is is holding up. You got the day that it was metalized, probably get you what the film thickness was when it was metalized. And you go out there with a dry film thickness gauge and you can look at this bridge and say, okay, it's holding up, it's not holding up. So these are case studies that anybody can go see. Here's a John Greenleaf bridge. This is in Massachusetts. So here's another bridge. This was actually completed in 2016. It was metalized. Then you got the Washington Crossing Bridge. It was actually built in 2004, but it was they had a, they completed the metallizing in 2000 in uh, 1994. So this is a good one to uh, it's been out there for a while. You can see how the metallizing is uh, is holding up on that one. This is a bridge that I was on several months ago. It's down in Peoria, Illinois. This bridge was uh, metallized over 21 years ago, and there's my dry film thickness gauge. It still has 12 mils of zinc on it. Uh, Mark Eckhoff is the District Four bridge engineer for Illinois. And I'm trying to get how many mills was specified on this bridge when it was put up. If I get that number, I can extrapolate the 21 years and I can see how long before this bridge is going to need maintenance, before they'll need to come in and power wash and then, and then give it a coat of paint. So hopefully I'll have that information sometime uh, soon. Here's the uh, another shot of the bridge that shows you it's still fine and pristine shape. You see a little oxidation on some of these girders, but you don't see any surface rust. Here's the underside of the bridge. It's just still fine. Notice uh, the rebar up here. If the rebar was uh, hot dip galvanized, uh, you wouldn't have this falling. You know, hot dip galvanized rebar has come a long way. There's a new process for continuous galvanized rebar where you can vend it after the galvanizing process and it's 100% pure zinc layer. If anybody wants to know about that process, um, you can take down my information. We got people that can actually do presentation for that for you folks. And just to show you that uh, obviously hot dip galvanizing rebar is something that people are using. You've got 300 tons in the Mario Como bridge, and this was completed in 2019. And this was for a design life of 100 years. And they, they chose uh, hot dip galvanizing for most of the rebar. This is a metalized and galvanized bridge in Chicago. Back in 2019, I was talking to a guy from a, an engineer from AACOM, and he told me the time this bridge was being uh, put up, it was one of the most complex projects going on in the United States because of the tunnels in the uh, in Chicago, the gas lines, the water lines, the electric lines. It was really intense project. What they ended up doing here, again, they use hot dip galvanizing and uh, metalizing it together. Any pieces that would fit in the local galvanizing bath, they galvanized. Anything that was too big, it was it was metalized. So these are some of the, the pictures from the uh, Circle Interchange, which is a huge project. When this gets done, it's probably going to be about 70 million pounds of steel. This is the uh, I-55 in Lakeshore. You got 15 million pounds with with these uh, six bridges here, and then with these bridges here on the Circle Interchange, you got over 22 million pounds. You still have the Jackson Street and the Kennedy. You got several others that still need to be. Um, 
that they're still working on. So you've got a lot of these that, uh, well, like I said, when this gets done, it's going to be around 70 million pounds. And this is a, a, a showpiece for um, New Hampshire. And this is the Memorial Bridge. Some of you that are on the call that are on the bridge preservation, we actually did a tour of this bridge several years ago. I was on this bridge and it was a pretty, it was a real showpiece. And this bridge was designed for durability. They say that, you know, metallizing was, is one of the most du uh, durable industrial coatings. And that's why they chose uh, metallizing. This is the first uh, metallized bridge in New Hampshire. When you do a bridge, you want to do a uh, porosity check. And they say that you, you don't want to have more than 10% porosity. Well, here's a shot, a, a micrograph of the porosity, and they achieved um, 4.6, which is which is very good. So whoever did the metallizing of, of that uh, structure did a very excellent job. And then what they did is they applied a, a clear penetrant to basically to seal in the, the porosity, and they, they, they gave it normal, normal uh, cure time. The Memorial Bridge, what they ended up doing on this bridge, they said that the, the bottom portion of the bridge in the specification, we want to have no less than 14 mils. And what they did, as you can see in the shot here, they achieved 15.5 on average. And the upper portion of the bridge, they want to have a minimum of 10, and they achieved 2.7. So they did an excellent job with monitoring this. Like I said, whoever did the, whoever did the metallizing did, a, did an excellent job. Metallizing is durable and it's, it's, it makes handling really easy of the pieces. Another thing they did is they use galvanized bolts. This way, by using galvanized bolts, you don't have to worry about building a corrosion cell. You have zinc on zinc. And this is a, uh, this is a shot in the, in the night. So this is a real showpiece. I know uh, New Hampshire is really proud of this bridge. It's, uh, I, I, I understand that they're, they're gonna be doing more metallized bridges. So the cording characteristics, again, you have a barrier protection, cathodic protection, abrasion resistance, and sustainability. Metallized coatings offer barrier protection. The structure can be coated in the field or, or in the uh, shop. It can, be, uh, it can be also painted in the field of the shop. Metallic coatings offer decades of corrosion protection in many atmospheric conditions. Duplex system top coated metallic zinc coatings offer enhanced corrosion protection and desired aesthetics. So this is my uh, contact information if anybody wants to reach out to uh, for a, a presentation on um, continuous galvanized rebar or they want to know about that Norway study, um, just let me know. Thank you very much. The preceding was produced by the National Center for Pavement Preservation. More information can be found on the web at pavementpreservation.org. Additional support provided by Michigan State University.